Hi, today I want to dive into an old school trick for setting up an 1176 style compressor, which typically works well as a starting point on most instrument tracks. Now, even though this technique has been around for quite a while, you may not have heard about it if you're relatively new to audio engineering because it's not really talked a lot about anymore. But even if you have heard about it, stick around because you may learn something new and useful. So let's go. Now the 1176 processor has been a go-to compressor for many audio engineers in business since its introduction in the 60s. It features a very distinctive tone, a wide range of sounds, and it really has become a studio standard over the years. However, it can sometimes be a little tricky to set up, but there is a more or less foolproof way to set it up without timing the attack and release to the track exactly. And this setting is called the Dr. Pepper setting. Now the words that you just heard were almost literally what Bobby Osinski wrote in his blog on his website and I'll feature the link in the description below. Now if you don't know Bobby Osinski, he's a really well-known audio engineer that wrote the reference book on mixing called The Mixing Engineer's Handbook and I have the second edition over here. But I think by now they're up to the fifth edition of this book and I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out and buy it if you like it. It's an affiliate link by the way, so if you buy it through that link you're also helping out the channel. Now the name of the trick, the Dr. Pepper setting on the 1176, actually comes from a study that was done somewhere in the 1920s, where they found that a lot of people have a bit of a dip in their energy level at 10 a.m., 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. And Dr. Pepper decided to use this in their marketing campaign, where they suggested that you prevent that dip by drinking one of their soft drinks at exactly those times of the day. Nowadays they would probably get sued or cancelled for such a statement and marketing campaign, but hey, different times back then, right? Now you may wonder what any of this has to do with audio engineering and the 1176 compressor, but it turns out that an engineer searching for the right sound discovered that setting the attack at 10 o'clock and the release at 2 o'clock and the ratio at 4 to 1 worked on a really wide variety of sounds and tracks. And this became known as the Dr. Pepper setting. Now of course you still have to set the threshold or the input on 1176 and the output, but you can just dial those in for the amount of compression that you want to hear. So if you want to set up your 1176 style compressor quickly, use these settings and see it as a starting point to further tune based on what the track needs exactly and maybe also adjusting the attack and release so that the compression breathes a bit with the track, which still works best in the end. But let's go ahead and have a listen at what this technique sounds like on a number of sources so you can decide for yourself whether it's worthwhile for you or not. And by the way, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it if you Give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon so you get notified when I publish another video. You can also use the super thanks button below the video or any of the affiliate links in the description to buy anything at those stores and I will get a small commission without any extra cost to you. But let's now have a listen starting with the Dr. Pepper setting on the snare track. Now this Cubase project contains recordings from a wash track called No Silence, which we recorded in Left Studios in Uden last year, and I'll link the video that's showing the recording process in the description below. And the final mix was made by Perfect Sounds Unleashed, the bass player of our band, and I'll put a link to the video clip as well as to the streaming platforms in the description below if you want to listen to the track. But over here you can see that we have a snare top and a snare bottom recording, which go to a snare group track. And there's no processing on this yet at all at the moment. So the raw recordings sound like this. If I now engage an 1176 plugin, and this one is the 1176 revision E from the UAD Spark platform. It's set up according to the Dr. Pepper setting, attack at 10 o'clock, release at two o'clock and four to one compression ratio. And I've already set the input and the output so that the loudness is about similar whether uh, compression is engaged or not. And it gets about 5 to 7 dB of compression. So let's listen to the difference with and without. I'll start with and then regularly disable the compressor so you can listen to the difference. Yeah, so I think you can really hear the difference. There's really a certain tone to it. It gets more snappy and edgy when I enable the compressor, which is very typical of an 1176. Let's listen to this Dr. Pepper setting on a bass guitar. 
Now this bass guitar was recorded on two tracks. One is a DI track and one is a track which already went through a compressor, a DBX compressor. But since I want to talk about the Dr. Pepper setting, I've only enabled the DI sound. And without any compression, it sounds like this. This time I have put an 1176 Revision A compressor on there, also from Universal Audio. Dr. Pepper setting, attack 10 o'clock, release 2 o'clock and 4 to 1 compression ratio. Input and output have already been set up for a decent amount of compression. So let's have a listen with and without. Now it's a nice growly bass sound anyway, but with the compression it becomes a bit more punchy and edgy to me. Let's have a listen on an acoustic guitar track. This is what it sounds like without compression. So let's enable the compressor on the Dr. Pepper setting and this is an anniversary edition 1176 from UAD. There is a 2 to 1 compression ratio on here as well so I've engaged the second button which is 4 to 1, attack 10 a.m, release 2 p.m and again a decent amount of compression. Let's listen. So what do you think? Does the compression work for you in this way? Let me know in the comments. Let's have a listen on the vocal. Now there's a very dynamic vocal in this track, so let's have a listen to it, maybe together with the guitar. Days don't look the same Sun without a shade Siding heads or tails And let's listen to this little part once with compression and once without. Days don't look the same Sun without a shade Siding heads or tails Days don't look the same Sun without a shade Siding heads or tails so let me know in the comments how you feel about this trick, whether you already knew about it and how you're using it on which kind of material etc. If you know a bit more about the background of this trick I'm also very interested because I couldn't actually find the origin of this one. It was probably handed over from audio engineer to audio engineer but if there's more of a story to it I would really like to know. Now if you want to know a little bit more in detail about how you can use a compressor in a mix I have a separate video about three ways how to use a compressor in a mix. So check it out over here, enjoy. And see you soon.